Welcome to Ubuntu Linux Desktop 14.04, the complete course for beginners. Now before we get started, we need to talk about our installation. You can either install Ubuntu Linux on a physical disk, that would be a physical installation, and this would require you to have a spare computer or a spare hard drive or a spare partition available for that physical installation of Ubuntu Linux. Now the other option is a virtual installation of Ubuntu Linux. What this means is that you can install and run Ubuntu Desktop within your current host operating system, whether that's Microsoft Windows or Mac OS or some other variety of Linux. You can use the Oracle VirtualBox application in order to create a virtual machine and run Ubuntu Desktop. Now what this means if you're not familiar with virtualization is that Ubuntu Desktop, the operating system, will virtually run in a window like any other application within your current operating system, also known as your host operating system. Now, whether you choose a physical installation of Ubuntu Desktop or a virtual installation, the installation process will be largely the same. And either way, you'll be able to follow along with my videos. I will be performing a virtual installation. However, I'll provide support and give you information on installing Ubuntu Desktop onto a physical disk in a physical computer as well. Now there are also a few things you need to know about different versions of Ubuntu. You may have heard of Ubuntu Desktop and Ubuntu Server. Of course, this course is going to be covering Ubuntu Desktop. However, I thought you'd like to know a little bit about these two popular versions of Ubuntu. Ubuntu Server is designed to run server tasks and typically does not include a GUI or GUI, that is a graphical user interface. Ubuntu Desktop does include a graphical user interface by default and it is optimized for handling desktop tasks. If you were to install Ubuntu Server, you wouldn't have any GUI. You wouldn't have a graphical user interface. All you would have would be a command line. Now, many people are familiar with the command line from days gone by. If you ever played with an Apple II, maybe you loaded up Oregon Trail, or you messed around in DOS, either way, those were command lines. And that's how Ubuntu Server is going to function by default. Now you can have Ubuntu Server with a graphical user interface, but that moves beyond the scope of this course. In this course, we'll be talking about Ubuntu Desktop, which by default will come with the GNOME Desktop environment already installed. So for this course, you'll want to download the desktop version of Ubuntu. Now you may also hear about LTS builds. LTS builds, such as 14.04, offer long-term support, which includes security and software updates from Ubuntu. It's usually a good idea to install an LTS build of Ubuntu, unless for some reason you need that latest and greatest cutting edge of technology, you'll usually want to go with an LTS build. It offers you five years, now it used to be three, now it's five years of long-term support. Also, you'll find that Ubuntu comes in 32 and 64-bit versions. In short, your PC must have a 64-bit processor in order to use the 64-bit version of Ubuntu. Well, how do you know if you have a 64-bit processor? In general, the newer processors are all going to be capable of handling 64-bit applications and operating systems. However, if you have an 
older computer, you may have a 32-bit processor, a processor that will not be able to handle the 64-bit version of any applications or operating systems. Now, there are several ways for you to tell for sure whether or not you have a 64-bit operating system installed. One of the easiest on a Windows system is to simply go to My Computer, right mouse click, and you should see in that pane whether or not you have a 64-bit version or a 32-bit version of Windows installed. If you're having trouble with this, please go ahead and post in the discussion board and I would be happy to assist you since different makes and models and operating systems are going to house this information in different locations. Again, in general, if you have a newer computer, you are very likely to have a 64-bit capable processor and you would then want to download the 64-bit version of Ubuntu Desktop. However, if you have an older computer, it is possible that your processor cannot handle 64-bit programs and applications, and you would then need to download the 32-bit version, also known as the x86 version of Ubuntu Desktop. That concludes an overview of everything we'll need to know before beginning our installation. Proceed to the next module, and we'll dive right in.